Hey everybody, it's Maggie Bot with Vlogger's Day 20, and um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about a card game. So this is Trickster from Daniel Solis. Daniel does a lot of games through uh, drive through cards, I think it's called, um, where he puts up the files and drive through cards is kind of like a print-on-demand service. So you pay him a, a little bit of money and you pay them a little bit of money and they send you the deck of cards. Um, I have previously played his Koi Pond and Kigi, which is uh, this beautiful tree game. Um, and you're kind of adding branches on and getting points for how many things you can connect. And um, Koi Pond is very beautiful as well. Um, I also played a prototype by him a while back, but it, I don't think that one's out yet. Um, Trickster is a card game similar to kind of a trick-taking game because you, you do play cards in order, um, trying to not collect them in this one. Um, but I, I wouldn't call it a trick-taking game. It's, it's similar but not the same. Um, in this game, it's got a little bit of a, an iota rule to it, and it's got a little bit of parade scoring. So it's got some interesting bits to it. Um, each deck, uh, and there are two at the moment, there's plenty more coming up, um, is seven suits with seven characters. So each suit has the same seven characters repeated. So you have, in this one, you have a brute and a striker and a nun and a detective and all kinds of things. Um, so in the game, you shuffle up the cards. You put out some face up as a trash. Uh, you put one in everybody's house, which is your points, which you don't want. And then you have, um, let's say we're a four-player game, we're going to have six cards in our hands. So you're looking at six cards. The first player is called the leader. The leader can play any card they like from their hand. So let's say the leader plays a brute. The second card that's played is called, uh, the second player is called the trickster. The trickster is going to define the round. So if the brute is a blue card and the trickster plays a green hunter, then we know that for the rest of the round, you can't play the same color as anyone else and you can't play the same character as anyone else. If, however, you were to play a green hunter, play a green hunter and then follow it the trickster plays a yellow hunter, that means that everyone else in the round must play a hunter from their hand. And it works the same with color, so the trickster defines only yellow cards may play during the round. Um, the trickster's goal is to get someone where they can't play a card into the pot. You go around the table once, and if everybody can play a card in the pot, the trickster must take the cards. So you kind of put the card out, and each character has a defined action. So this particular deck is uh, very, it, it works by putting cards from your house into people's hands or to look at people's hands, exchanging cards. The other deck that he made that I have is the fantasy deck. And in the fantasy deck, a lot of what you're doing is exchanging cards with the face-up trash. Um, so that was a big difference between the two decks. And it's designed where you can mix and match characters from one deck or another. You can kind of make your own, which is nice because I think playing at different player counts, there's going to be some characters you'll want at the lower ones and some characters you'll want at the higher ones. So you go around and around, and everyone's trying to avoid taking cards, avoid taking cards. And once someone has no cards in hand when the pot is taken, um, you score, and the way you score is that you get a point per card you have in your house, but if you have strictly the most of any given color, so if I have the most violet of anyone on the table, they don't count. So if I got five violet cards, I don't have to score mine at all, and everyone else with violet cards does. This makes it very interesting that if you start getting cards in your house, you can still very well win. Taking every trick in the game, except for like two, you're definitely going to win. Uh, this makes an interesting tension, and uh, the different player powers definitely add a lot to this game. Uh, the printed rules say, I think it says three to seven players. I'm probably going to redefine that as four to six, and six is pushing it. Because with too many players, there's just so much chaos and so much things going on that you don't feel like you're really part of the game. You feel like the game is going and you're not. But at four, it is a wonderful, wonderful game um, about making sure things are in the right hands at the right times. And it's it's definitely on the lighter side. It's just kind of a casual end of the night game. But man, is it really fun. Um, you get to be a little bit addictive and kind of hold grudges, and it's all well and good inside the game. Um, the, the deck we played the most of has uh, two abilities to be the leader and the trickster all in one. So if I play a striker, the striker puts another card from your hand into the pot. 
So if I play it later in the round, I have to have a card that fits within the, the construct of the pot. But if I'm the leader and I play a striker, I get to define the second card and become my own trickster, which is really nice because you're going to have at least five cards in the pot, so it's likely that someone won't be able to play. Um, we had a good deal of fun playing this, and I would highly recommend it. Um, so for any of you that haven't, I would highly recommend picking up Koi Pond as well. Uh, it's a beautiful game, and it's very, very fun. Uh, Kigi is not... It's... it's it's lighter, it's much lighter, and it, it it works better for kind of a casual crowd than a strategic crowd. There's just not, there's not much you can do to mitigate the luck in that game. Um, so, uh, I also wanted to announce that I am officially staff at Geek Girl Con out here in Seattle. Geek Girl Con is a convention that is held every year to celebrate women in um, geeky fields, so STEM, science, and uh, comics, and games, and movies, anything geeky that celebrates women, um, it is a convention for that. And um, unfortunately, it's got kind of a misnomer where it is not for women only. Uh, it is a con for everyone, literally. Uh, it is as inclusive and diverse as possible. They try and welcome everyone and make sure that the facilities and attitudes are open to every, every, everyone. So I've been a fan of theirs for years, and I've helped out a little bit here and there whenever I could. And this year, the opportunity came along where I could help even more. So I'm going to help run their gaming floor. I'm going to be the operations manager of the gaming floor, I think is the title. Um, <laughs> but basically I'm going to help any way I can to get their gaming to run smoothly and productively, and going forward I will take on as much responsibility as I possibly can. Um, I will also be gearing up with Geek Girl Con and Mox Boarding House, my shop, to do a monthly game night. It's coming up very soon. I will probably do a small vlog just to announce that and try and spread the word. Uh, so if you are in the Seattle area, keep keep, uh, I think it was October, October, late October, one of the Tuesdays, uh, so either the 20th or the 27th. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. It's so far away that I'm not even going to think about it right now, but I am looking forward to it quite a bit. That's all for me for now. I will talk to you guys later. I'm going to go half to work, so for some big meeting thing. Super well prepared, though, so I'm not real nervous. I just got to put on real person clothes now. Bye!